Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 19, the Euclidean algorithm as an application of the long division algorithm. That's a really weird word, Euclidean. Where does that come from? Well, I decided to look this up for you. Euclid of Alexandria was a mathematician. Actually, he was a philosopher born 325 BC or now we call it BCE, before the Common Era. Uh, he died about 265 BC in Alexandria, Egypt. Okay, so he was an Egyptian philosopher, very brilliant man. They often call him the father of geometry. So well over 2,000 years ago, this guy walked the face of the earth, and he was the one who actually started um, recording theorems and algorithms of mathematics. So that's just a quick background of what this Euclidean algorithm is. Okay, so Euclid's algorithm is used to find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers. So what you have to do is divide the larger of the two numbers by the smaller one. And if there's a remainder, do it again. If there's a remainder, do it again until your remainder is zero. Then what you divide it by when you've got a remainder of zero is the GCF. And I'm going to explain that to you in detail in a moment. So 383 divided by 4, if we were to just simply do this, we'd say 4 goes into 383. 7 times 4 is 20. 9 times 4 is 36. 36 subtract. 8 minus 6 is 2. Bring down 3. 6 times 4 is 24. Too big. I need a 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Minus 3. And now I'd have to put a decimal here. I put a 0 here and bring it down. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract and get 2. Bring down another 0. And I get 95.75. 12. 4.32. 12 times 3 is 36. Subtract. This is just a division algorithm practice. 13 minus 6 is 7. 2. And 6 times 12 is 72. No remainder. Answer is 36. If I take 13 and divide 403 by it, 13 times 3 is 39. Subtract and get 13. 13 goes into 13 evenly one time. And I get a remainder of 0, which I didn't show here. Because that is what we are looking for when we're doing a Euclidean algorithm. So that's just division again. Then they're doing a conceptualized example of Euclid. Um, I'm going to skip that for now. I might come back to it at a later time, but I'd rather apply it first. So let's apply Euclid's algorithm to some of the problems from our last lesson. What is the GCF of 30 and 50? Well, if you remember, greatest common factors is doing this. So I'm going to show you the way we did it last class. And we find all the factors of 30. And the more we do this, the better you should get at it. And it should be much quicker using our rules of 3s and 9s and so forth. 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10. That's it. So the GCF greatest common factors is 30. Okay, now we're going to use Euclid's algorithm. And what that says is take the smaller of the, take the bigger and divide by the smaller. So I'm going to put 30 here. And I'm going to divide 50 by 30. 1 times 30 is 30, and I get 20. That's a remainder. I don't care about the decimal. We're going to stop here. But what our remainder is going to be is I'm going to take my remainder and divide by what we were dividing by. 1 times 20 is 20. Subtract. I still have a remainder. So I'm going to take this remainder and put it here. And I'm going to divide the number we divided by. I put it in here. 
2 times 10 is 20. Subtract and get 0. And this is our greatest common factor. Now, I just paused there for a moment because I've made a mistake. So I need to fix that. I did 30 and 60, and it says 30 and 50, so just ignore this side, I apologize, but rather than starting the video over again, I can fix this. So if we do 50 like I was supposed to, 1 times 50, 2 times 25, 3 won't go, 4 won't go, 5 times 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, do not go. So my GCF is 10, not 30. Okay, now it makes sense to me. So the greatest common factor of 30 and 50, I did 60 before for some odd reason. 30 and 50 is 10. And when I did Euclid's algorithm, dividing three times, I got that same 10. Okay? So that's what we're going to do today, is using Euclid's algorithm. So apply that. This is just simply take the bigger number, divide by the small. Don't worry about remainders and continuing with decimals. Take what we got from remainder and then divide the number we started with by the remainder. 2 times 15 is 30. Subtract. Once you get a remainder of 0, then our GCF is what we divided by. So the greatest common factor of 30 and 45 is 15. Some pretty neat stuff here. Just keep in mind this guy figured this out over 2,000 years ago. Okay. It doesn't seem like a real big deal on small numbers, but when we start getting into larger numbers, it is a big deal. Okay. So the greatest common factor of 96 and 144. Again, divide 144 by 96. And that's only going to be one time. 3, 8, 13 minus 48. That's our remainder. Do not continue. Our remainders are now our divisor. The dividend is what our divisor was. 2 times 8 is 16. 8, 9, subtract, and I got my remainder of 0. So the GCF of 96 and 144 is my divisor, and I get a remainder. Mind equals blown. Okay, now 840 and 660. 840 divided by 660. One time. Take our remainder. Divide our divisor by it. Um, I'm estimating here 200 goes into 600 three times. 0, 4, 2, 5. Subtract 0, 2, 1. Continue. 120. 180. Once. Subtract 60. And then finally take that 60 right here and divide this by it. And 2 times 60 is 120. We have no remainder. Therefore, my divisor is my GC. Okay. Hopefully you're as impressed with this algorithm as I am. So I think it's pretty cool. Okay. Example 4. Area problems. The greatest common factor has many uses. Among them, a GCF lets us find out the maximum size of squares that cover a rectangle. When we solve problems like this, we cannot have any gaps or any overlapping squares. Of course, the maximum size squares will be the minimum number of squares needed. So a rectangle computer table measures 30 inches by 50 inches. We need to cover it with, a square, with square tiles. What is the side length of the large square tile we can use to complete largest square tile we can use to completely cover the table without overlaps or gaps? Okay, so this is 30 by 50. So I can't just cut it in half because 30, 50 cut in half is 25. 
So if this is 30 by 25, it is not a square. The square has four equal sides. All right. So if I broke this up, I would have to make a square. I don't like this diagram because it's deceiving. So this would be 30 by 30, and this would be 20 by 30, because 30 plus 20 is 50, and opposite sides are equal. And obviously that's not a square. 20 by 30 is still a rectangle. So this question is saying, how can I break this up into squares? And this is what they're explaining before the division algorithm of, or using the division algorithm to use Euclid's algorithm to find this guy. So I'm going to do the. I'm going to find the greatest common factor of 30 and 50, and I'm not going to do it as a list. I'm going to use Euclid's algorithm. So I'm going to take 50, and I'm going to divide it by 30. 1 times 30 is 30. Subtract and get 20, and then take that 20 and divide 30 by it. 1 times 20 is 20. Subtract get 10, and then finally, okay, this is what I'm doing. 10 goes into 20 two times. And my GCF is 10. That tells me I need a 10 by 10 square. So I would have three of them here, right? 10 times 3 is 30. And I need 5 going this way. So it would look a little like this. Very hard for me to draw straight lines with this, but you get the idea. So we have, this is 10, this is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and so on, all the way around. Okay, understood? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 10, 20, 30. So we, our GCF tells us the side lengths of our square. And then when we fill this in, we can tell how many we need. And it's really 5 times 3, 15. Okay? So if we use squares that are 10 by 10, how many do we need? 15. Okay? If we are, if this were a giant chunk of cheese in a factory, would it change the thinking of the calculations we just did? And the answer is no. It doesn't matter if it's cheese or a lava table. We can break that up into even squares. Okay. So if we did this in a cheese factory, every mouse would have the same size piece to be fair. How many 10 inch by 10 inch square cheeses could we cut from a giant 30 by 50 inch slab? Well, if it's no different, then it's the answer to A, 15. Okay. That was a quick, short lesson. So, go do your problem set.